Gabe, you're blinking a lot, bud. <laughs>
Kansas 150 for the Iscar Peter Genny Graphics Design Series round number four out of 20 going to be rolling here from Kansas Speedway, Kansas City, USA, obviously in the state of Kansas. A lot of Kansas in that, and um, a lot of defining things about this track in particular. It should be interesting on how this will uh, create a situation here for tonight. But otherwise than that, we welcome you here live tonight. Uh, Thank you all for joining us here for night. My name is Ika Reyes. I'm gonna uh, tune in. Oh, we just started off, so. Uh, why is it not? We'll go ahead and pull, it, pull up practice and such on the left hand side of the screen. I did um, I did unclutter the the board finally. Uh, it looks horrendous, but now. It actually looks like a timing board instead of um, instead of something all mumbo jumbo, but it should be a fun from start to finish. Uh, the timing, the counter, the counter finally works as well, so that, that's cool. Um, yeah, we'll just dive into race analysis here for the night. Temperatures here are tonight, 68 degrees, humidity at 0%, wind going north at 6 miles per hour. Track description, 1.5 miles in length, track turns 4, 1 in each corner, elevation going around 900 above sea level, well, uh, just about 1,000. Track temp currently 70 degrees, and lap total is currently infinite because we are here at, uh, uh, under practice conditions as of right now. Race analysis on the right hand side of your screen. Kansas Speedway, length 100 miles, 150 laps gonna be ran for the, I mean, yeah, 150 miles gonna be ran for the night. 50% fuel, so we should see a smaller pit window. We're looking around every 30, uh, maybe every 30, 45 laps, and just change it to 35 to 30, because we're still unsure on how that fuel window will pan out. 
and uh, pit road speed is 45. And you're welcome, dog. I do actually have some couple of stuff fixed. Oh, well, actually, slide yourselves aside since uh, practice just ended. So, well, I'll get a, I'll just go over of what I fixed over with the broadcast. But otherwise, than that, we'll slide yourself to the side as we go ahead and salute our nation's colors. Rise up, remove your hats. As you know, this is America. Don't catch a slipping up. back here live at Kansas Speedway for the Kansas 150 Oscar Peter Grandy Graphics Designs series about to go green here soon. We'll take a look at uh, all the things I fixed over the broadcast so I was about to mention. The bottom right finally display, uh, displays manufacturers for all Xfinity cars and uh, select cup cars and the Silverado finally, so that's fixed, luckily. Um, as well as I needed to go change that um, to make it look like it is in the NASCAR Fox broadcasts and such. Um, what else did I fix? The right, the left hand side of the board does not display ordinance, it now just displays position numbers, not first, second, third, it just goes by one, two, three, four, five, on down. And unclutters the board and it makes it look cleaner as well. Um, it, it's like that in real life as well. So you gotta make as as much things as uh, on spot as much as you can. And those small changes uh, make the board cleaner. Uh, what else did I change? Oh, you'll see coming up once I do get into the grid. Um, I did add some. I did add some uh, color to it. So uh, the the driver panel will display number uh, the 81, like behind the 81. We'll, we'll try that. There it goes. Here's here's an example. The two, obviously, having a number two on this background, red background. I probably need to make the number bigger, but. Uh, of course, this sticker is still a work in progress. It's not all the way 100% complete. Well, as we do, uh, look around. Blaze McKinney out on the racetrack, number 57. Peak Performance Motorsports. Unfortunately, that uh, that uh, ceases to exist in NASCAR, but still runs the scheme. Jake Sylvia running for Webster Motorsports as he. Whips it across the wire, uh, logs himself in 14th place. So. Still have more drivers joining in. Garrett Pick making himself on the racetrack in that number 99 machine. Oh, yeah, and uh, Dog mentioned another thing. He caught it before I did. Uh, I did fix up the, the counter on the top left, so it finally counts down in seconds rather than minutes. Um, so, yeah, that's all, that too is also fixed. 
Austin Johnson making himself on the racetrack. I did uh, make a bit of names, like the bottom name is now more bolder than the first name. Some minor tweaks here and there. Uh, the top 20 board is now fixed. Uh, same thing with the ordinance on the uh, left. It doesn't have the uh, first, second, or third. It just goes by uh, number and such as well. It's not bolded on the right hand side of the, uh, right -hand side of the ticker. So, um, I'm excited to display the new board here for tonight, but here we go for tonight. Your starting order for this 100 lapper for this one. Colors are now displayed on the, uh, colors are now going to be displayed, and I'm yet to look for a sponsor to slap in the middle of the thing of the, uh, the grid ticker, so. As we go through the field, uh, find your favorite driver and hopefully he'll win it here for tonight. And speaking of favorite driver, Aaron Mulrooney, my dude! He's up front in that number two. Gonna, he's gonna be starting second, but Dominic Howe in the number 30, logging himself to the top. Chase Bonser, Hunter Johnson, gonna round out row number two. Cole Woody, Dylan Alt, round out row number three. Row number four, Ryan Kendrick, very strong here in Iscar. He's showing tonight uh, why he's uh, gonna be one of the best contenders in tonight's field. Connor Brandon in the number 92. Blaze McKinney, Keaton Jones, round out row number five. Row number six, gonna be Liam Sheen, Cody Webster. Webster actually coming in here tonight, your points leader. Dane Cruz, Jake Sylvia, 91-116. Joe Burgi, Glenn Bundren, gonna round out row number, did I say row 16? I meant row, row seven. Row 9, going to be William Schmidt, Austin Johnson. Row number 10, Daniel Falkingham. Falkingham looking for a win uh, for his first in this series. He's already picked up one in, I think, bronze. Come. Peter and Brannigan. Good pick. Jaloa Hankins. Rexon DeVries. No loss as he's made his start. Gabe Allen also on the racetrack as well. Andrew Ramos, Garrett Hess. I think that'll be all here for tonight. So, congratulations to your uh, bowl winner. Now, number 30 of Don DeCow. There he is in front of your screen. And that means two proximity cars will line up the front row as we head ourselves to this green flag. Mulrooney on the outside, that's his teammate. And we got like <laughs> a lot of proximity guys up in this. Actually, top four are all proximity guys. My goodness. They're all showing their why they're the best in the business in NASCAR, but pace car lights are off. We set ourselves up for this green flag. The number 30, Dominic Cow will lead the field to the green. My name is Zika Reyes. If you're not just joining us tonight, Kansas 150 going to take the green as Dominic Cow leads the field to the first green flag of the night. Green, green, green. We're on the throttle. We're up and away here at Kansas. Definitely a cleaner start than what we had in the cup race. We didn't we didn't log across the start finish line without having a cup line. Here we are up front. Oh! That's Bonser in the wall. He has to keep it up there. To get out of everybody's way as my goodness. This is the product of Kansas and why it's so dangerous racing that high groove. You're right up against the wall, which is actually the preferred groove around here. You're not all the way against the white line unless it's coming into a long run. But the people who will log around the, the fastest, right up against that safer barrier, will win this race. And your pole sitter of that number 30, Dominic Cow, is doing it best. He's pulled away by at least a three-fourths of a tenth the lead. Whatever the heck I said there. Look at right behind. Uh, this Webster and by the looks of it, Cole Woody. And he's going to use the low side, trying to slide right in front of it. You're going to see a lot of slide jobs being pulled here as everybody paces around just about up on the high side. It might look like Talladega. But a 
damn sure don't race like it. As of right now, the number 30 of Dominic Cow is trying his best to zoom up and away. And that leader has a lot of clean air, so it's definitely an advantage to him as here we go, battle for a second. Two proximity gals gonna go right at it. The number two of Mulrooney. And the number 32 of Hunter Johnson. Hunter, not, he's gonna elect to file behind the two. Rather than to pull out a line. Because if, you're, if you're going low, it's gonna cost you a lot. It's looking right behind. Oh, catches the wall just a slight. Here comes a non proximity driver looking right behind. They're all the way in the apron. And oh my goodness, there's a car. That's Neil in the apron. Don't know who that is. He gets out of harm's way. Kendrick is going to play spoiler to these proximity people. And Kendrick, that number 65 in the fourth place. Going to take away the line of Dylan Alt. He wants to use the bottom, but not going to go anywhere with it. As it worked right off the corner. Close racing right behind. Speaking of close racing, there's contact right behind. Liam Shane's on the wall. And around goes that dude right in the background. I do not know who that is. And it's... Unfortunately, the 05 of Andrew Ramos, who tags the inside wall after he got loose off of two. I wouldn't say if there was contact or what, but Andrew Ramos is around, and we're under our first caution of the night. It's up against the high side. Ooh, in the wall right in front, and a bit of net code right behind. Uh, don't know who that was. I think that was Joe Burgi, who tagged the outside wall right off of, right off the of two. And I don't know if the 91 of Dane Cruz. Looks like Dane's blinking a lot, and unfortunately uh, caught the 05 of Andrew Ramos. And it brought him around. And we go under pace. For the first time tonight, Dominic Howe will bring the field onto pit road for the first time on lap number seven. One car electing to actually stay out on the racetrack, that'd be the number 77 of Keaton Jones. I wonder what is going through his mind while they're taking track position then tires is a good call because it's hard to pass here at Kansas, especially when there's so much grip right against that safer barrier. But Keaton Jones gonna elect to stay out. But meanwhile up front, uh, we'll have to see on who will win the race off of pit road. Everybody off the throttle as they gas it right up off and Hunter Johnson moves himself into second place off of pit road. All be have to start on the outside though. But Dominic Howe in that number 30 for his pit stall advantage plays dividend for him and that number 30 goes uh, out of pit road first but he is not the first car up front that'd be Keaton Jones in the 77 only eight laps logged on this uh, run so I wouldn't expect the tire fall off to be too much but this is the older tire model and with this older tire model um, short runs do play key on how how these drivers, um, what you call it? How these drivers manage through the race. Say Dane Cruz will park it, uh, unfortunately, with his blinking issue. So good for him to get out of the way and respect everybody else on the racetrack. Gabe apparently pulled a Corey Hartz. My goodness. Did disconnect from session, so certain park. Yeah, 
uh, Gabe respecting uh, uh, people on track with his blinking issues, just logging a lap and getting out of there uh, before he causes more problems. So props to him for respecting everybody else on the racetrack. Pace car lights are off. We're going to get the one in the green this time by. The number 77, Keaton Jones, will be leading the field to the restart. He has led three laps. This is the time race, obviously, for uh, lap number 10. We're going to come to lap number 11 for the restart. Dominic Howe on the outside of him, which is the preferred groove, but on the restart, you have all that room on the apron to dive yourself down and shortcut it into turns number one. So watch out for that 77 as he tries to dive it onto the apron and get the jump on that number 30. But we'll see how old tires play versus new tires, and we'll have to see on how Dominic Howe will elect to pass uh, Keaton Jones. Uh, will he shove it, into, shove it into the low side and hopefully pass uh, on the low cleanly, or will he try to nose up right against that safer barrier around Keaton Jones and whip around, uh, maybe get him a bit riled up Right up the high side. Pace car going to slide itself on to pit road as my English is starting to be broken like my mother's and father's. Apologies about that. I love you, mom and dad. But here we go. Pace car on to pit road. That number 77, Keaton Jones, will lead the field to the restart. Green, green, green. We're up and to get up and away. Green and green as I said, it, Keaton Jones is going to shortcut it through the apron. And look how big of a lead he's built up over those proximity duos right behind his Hunter Johnson. He wants to take advantage of that low side on the restart, and he pulls himself into second. Three wide right behind as Heater gets shoved all the way down to the low side near the yellow line. That's the actual white line. What am I saying? Uh, all the way to the low side. Look at Hunter. He wants to work that low side. Not enough grip there, but Jones is on older tires. And here we go. Look at the run right behind by Dominic Cow. Blocking being pulled as Dominic gets shoved up right against the Sanford barrier. Keaton Jones is all he wants to see. Side by side racing for second place. It's just working out for that number 77. But those old tires really playing in effect and here comes that 32 of Hunter Johnson right to the low side for the lead Hunter Johnson trying to win his third race this season in four starts here he is up front actually third race the second win the three starts and here he is with his first start and now he's leading the field as a three wide right behind scramble into one Keaton Jones is right in the mix of it Oh, Jones gets put in the wall. Trouble right behind. That's the 39. Yellow, yellow, Daniel yellow. Falkingham spins through the apron, gets caught up in it. Is going to be the. Who's getting caught up in it is going to be the 99 of Garrett Pick. Who's going to tow Mater it backwards through three and four. Hopefully he doesn't hit anything, but. Um, a big jam up right off of two after Jones hit the wall. Did not work into those people's favor. Get a replay of what happened. You see Jones getting to the wall. Looks like the 99 of Garrett Pick uh, got into the quarter panel of that 39 of Daniel Falkingham. Not a lot of damage on that number 39, but uh, Garrett Pick, otherwise, uh, that whole rear end of that machine is a bit crumpled up. Take another look at it. Looks like, looks like Garrett just washed up right into Daniel. We'll get it on board for that number 77. Keaton Jones, if I could even find him on the leaderboard. Jones is probably not going to be happy about that contact with Cody Webster in that number 45. You see the three wide in the one and two. This being a single groove racetrack, and Cody just trying to shove two cars into one groove, and he put Keaton in the wall right <laughs> while doing it. Unfortunately, a caution came out for that number 77. He's going to slam pit road. And everybody, it looks like we're splitting the field halfway. But again, we're, we didn't log as many laps.
time. So we're under our second caution of the day, and Hectic Grayson is uh, already scrambling this 28 car uh, entry list. Some people who did not start on the racetrack, uh, number 48, Brandon, uh, Mark Brannigan, is being displayed in 28th place. Um, Gabe Allen, who logged in a couple of laps, uh, went ahead and parked it. Dane Cruz, uh, blinking issues on that machine, unfortunately, he had a DNF. Liam Sheen is also a part of that um, incident off of turn number two. Uh, on the first caution, uh, looks like he's going to be a DNF as well. Braxton DeWeese is now one down. I guess he's going to call it a day after this caution. Still a lot of racing left here to go. As I said, Kansas Speedway is probably one of the weirdest ovals on iRacing. In real life, you'd see all three grooves being used, but on the sim, these tires, these V6 tires, just favor that top side since there's just more banking around, uh, more banking right against that safer barrier. You can still make that bottom groove work, but what I'm more interested in saying about is how the new retire model will hold up against Kansas. Uh, will that bottom groove finally kick in? I'll have to see once uh, we see another Xfinity race uh, head, back, head back here with a new tire model, in which they might do so soon because in that hotfix, uh, Road Pro ends this week, right? I mean, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or around, or around before the hot fix. And hence why I think they have a hot fix on Wednesday to go ahead and update these cars with the V7 tires. That should be interesting on how uh, those V7 tires will play out on these Xfinity machines because in my book these are the hardest things to drive on iRacing as of right now. The cup car is a load of crap. Not to diss it or anything, it's a lot of fun to run in it but it's still a load of crap. Nobody likes to, none of the people who like to keep the wheel in their hands. I don't think they really like it. Uh, opinions being thrown left and right by me but We'll head ourselves to this restart. The number 32 of Hunter Johnson will lead the field to the green. Three proximity gal is going to line up the outside green flag, row. Green, green, flag. green, green, and they all time the restart out well. Probably in a call to uh, Hunter, probably counting down that whole outside line. Work into turns one and two. Dominic Cal is putting the pressure on that number 32 of Hunter Johnson. Right up to turn number two. Side by side action for third place. Ryan Kendrick trying to roll the low side. Could it get clear? That two of Mulrooney is going to be side by side into three. Kendrick going to sail it, but that outside line is looking strong right up off the corner. Oh my goodness, a bit of blinking right back, uh, right in the background. Don't know who that is. Being a front. Hunter Johnson now pulls himself to a two, now a three tenth lead. Over that number 30 of Dominic Howe. Still double wide, Kendrick still hitting that low side very nicely. As he whip right off a of two, three wide action. Now it's Heater who's stuck in the middle. Oh, it looks like a lead machine. I don't even know. It's an RX racing machine that looks like the number 72, Kiloa Hankins. In the mix of that, no. As well as the number 79 of William Schmidt. They work around the bunch right away as people being thrown left and right as Heater cuts the nose off of Schmidt. as they work right up off two and everybody slotting to that outside to use up as much track as they can for momentum. And Webster, in the meantime, has logged himself in the fourth place. Double wide action here right behind for fifth. Connor Brandon on the highest side. That'd be, I think, Dylan Alt down low. And they're looking to fan out as they head into the corner. The thing that's so sketchy about running that high side is Everybody's breaking point is different. And oh, right behind, we got Shovel. One car all the way down to the apron. That's Blaze McKinney. He's still on the lead lap. 
was around his teammate at the time of contact. He's already been involved in a wreck, but that day going downward as of right now, but meanwhile, against that safer barrier. Look at all these guys just lined up. They're going to go three wide between the Arx Racing Gals. 72, Kiloa Hankins going to sail into the low side. Look at it. Schmidt get super tight. And two for one is Daniel Falkingham as he works himself around two Arx Racing Machines. And he wants a third one of that Miller Motorsports Gucci of that number 11 of Eric Heater. Daniel's plowing through the field, but that damage might have affected it. Right behind, a little bit of battling out for. This is to be ninth place. So we're right off a of four. Another strategy to be uh, mentioned is to protect yourself in turn number one. You won't see those drivers hitting the apron unless you're clear of a battle. People like, I guess, Connor Brandon, they're going to probably elect to keep it on the banking rather than to the flat because that protects your line coming into turns number one. Connor going to shortcut it, though, to get himself ahead of that 65 and Kendrick in a one. Kendrick looks like he got tight. Slid up the racetrack, and Kendrick is not finding a hole in line. That outside line is going to have to settle in right in front of Cole Woody. Going to have to pull a slider right off a of four. We'll see how he does it. It's like, oh, multiple cars on the wall right behind. One car flies it to the apron. Do not know where that machine is. There he is, that's Dylan Alt, and he slams the tires, and he's going to call it a day. No caution being called. Dylan is uh, saying, peace, I'm out, this setup sucks, and yeah, I'm better than you. But otherwise than that, uh, unfortunate to Dylan, who was running, he wasn't even running top 20. Oh, that's fucking him in the wall, and he slams the outside wall, comes back in the back, slams into yo, another yo, driver. Yo. That's William Schmidt, who might have got caught up in that. But luckily, he net coded through, or was it Kiloa Hankins, I think. Either way, he collided with an RX racing machine. And Daniel Falkingham's day just went even more south. That is uncharacteristic of Falkingham to wreck it a lot. And I guess Kansas is just not his place. We're going to go replay what happened as they work to the front straightaway. It looks like Cole Woody was just trying to pull. As I said, it looks like Falkingham was just trying to squeeze on the high side, and I think Cole just got a bit tight, didn't anticipate Falkingham. And, oh, right there, there's the hit I was talking about. I think that was the 72 of Kiloa Hankins. No, it wasn't. It was the 79 of William Schmidt who's been involved already in multiple wrecks this season. He says his bad luck is shit. He's proving it here tonight as Falkingham nowhere to go and that front end is just, just about destroyed. That number 79 machine, even though he net coded through, it's still a bit of damage on that machine, but we'll hit pit road this time by. Leading the field on the charge. That number 32 of Hunter Jansen as we got a car in the background and we're spinning it around. That's Glenn Bundren. He's going to back up. Oh my goodness. Falkingham. Right maneuver to whip it right. No pun intended. We'll have to see on how that contact was made, but oh boy. That was a bit sketchy, but meanwhile, pit road is busy and I'm going to do it the ratchet way as I align my camera right on the pit road and skippity boop bop bow. And off a of pit road first, looks like it's the number 32 of Han Air Jansen. He's gonna pull himself the hunty. Gonna go up front, and that number 32 gonna drag along his teammate, Luke 30. Dominic, who was all the way in third. Webster entered fourth. 
I mean, what am I saying? Dominic entered third, Webster entered second, but looks like Webster will be on third, but I did see Mullen did give Webster an no, no, I thought that was Webster. Uh, yeah, I, I thought it was Cody, not Cole. They both have C's in their name. But anyway, um, yeah, it was second and third slot, and that'll mean Webster will elect the bottom. I mean, he won't elect it. He'll have to start on the bottom. has to do he has to time out the restart with uh, his teammate right up on the outside of Dominic Cal. these two drivers have to time the restart so Webster can't get a good restart to be side by side with Dominic entering one if it's like that I think Dominic is gonna fall back multiple positions because Webster is definitely gonna find a line off of two Looks like uh, Cole uh, got the penalty by the looks of the chat. On the iRacing chat, not the actual stream chat. I know Miller's giving his input. Hello, owner. Uh huh. Weird. Weird calling a, another person who is. Yeah, never, never mind. I'm just blabbering along. Anyway, as we set ourselves up to this next green flag run. Just about a third of the race has been ran under caution as one car is hitting the wall. Uh, that'd be uh, the 77 of Keaton Jones who's probably said, I've had enough of this. He is probably pulling a Dylan Alt as well, in which he says, I ain't good enough for this shit. He might call it a day as he's, he's just banging that right side against the safer barrier. It ain't safer anymore because Keaton is definitely uh, giving it one heck of a threat. Here we go. Um, as we double up, working off our third caution, as I said. A decent green flag run, so it's not like we've had caution after caution as Keaton's still 2xing the wall. Remember, no incident limit. And Keaton showing a, a bit of a loophole. Why there should be an incident limit, but that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Whatever. We get ourselves set up for this green flag. For the five cars in this top five are all proximity cars. That'd be uh, Hunter Johnson, Dominic Cowell, Connor Brandon, and Aaron Mulrooney Jr. Pace car slides itself on a pit road. Webster going to play spoiler in this restart. Green, green, green. Up and away. Green, as one green, car green. Up the high side. Going to elect much of it. And by the looks of it, nicely timed restart by Dominic to slide in front of that number 45 of Webster. And those two are probably going to pull away. The odd man left out of that. Connor Brandon, but now he's up with the, uh, he's tucked up right against that wall. He's in the third lane. He's in enter three and four, unless Webster wants to go ahead and pull a slide job, as in, he might have it. No, by the looks of it, he knows it's himself ahead, but right now it's not working to his favor. Webster gonna try it again. Oh, he was clear. That number 92, momentarily, he could probably pull the slider maybe in the center of the corner, but too early in the race to make some aggressive moves. And Webster, unfortunately, is going to pay the price of uh, le uh, laying back just a slight. But I mean, we're not even halfway yet. I agree with Webster, just run your race right now. We still have a few stuff to go. Pit window is going to be like, I guess, every 33 ish. But looks a bit drivers are saying on the racetrack but haven't talked about what this driver this is Colton Salick he is making a charge to the front slide job all right off in a three and four corner with the oh he contacts me Colton goes around saved it what what wasn't even contact being made Colton huge net code
I don't think he even got as much damage as he had on that machine, but a lot of net code bling uh, factor into that. Colton falls all the way back to 12th place. Connor probably has to feel bad. You gotta get credit. Colton Salick for doing one heck of a job to save that machine, but unfortunately that damage is not evident. And he's gonna have to plow through everybody right in front. This is William Schmidt he's coming up on. Salick gonna sail it in the one slide job. Made it work. Yeah, he just made it work. <laughs> How about that? Colton Salick making something off of that bottom groove in one and two. Now he has Heater to come up on. with a crossover. He wants a bit much of it as we see cars on the wall right behind. I think it was Schmidt tagged the wall and Salick now moves himself back into ninth. This might be the man. Colton Salick has proven himself why he might be the man to win this race. He probably doesn't have the car, but as Mike Joy said, he has the drive to win this race. Focus in now with this third place battle. This is Webster, Mulrooney, and Kendrick. The trio of machines. Webster's going to protect that high side as. Ooh, looks like Webster. Right up, he's pinpoint driving by that number 45 of Webster. As I'm stumbling upon my words yet again. Pinpoint driving by that number. 45 to keep it out of that safer barrier. Trying to find as much grip as he can on the outside and it's paying off as of right now. He's P4. Looking right in for P3. Yellow flag is oh, out. Oh, got a yellow. And this is Woody involved in this one. That's the double zero of Garrett Hess. We haven't talked about him and his engine is actually blown on that machine. So the double zero of Garrett Hess. His day is it's gone down the drain, unfortunately. We work right up off the corner, and by the looks of it... Oh! Right in front, it looks like a 3 Oh, nowhere to go. Flips a double O. Uh, double zero. And into the outside wall, Hess goes. You see Woody right there. Take another look. It looks like Woody just got in the wall and just knocked it down trying to get it out of everybody's way, but unfortunately, the double zero of Garrett Hess, wrong place, wrong time, and his day is most likely done for. Bad timing on how Cole flew into there. Pit road's open, everybody. No surprise, gonna hit pit road. Got one driver gonna stay out on the racetrack, that's Keaton Jones, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's planning to do what he did last restart, uh, where we had a couple restarts to go. We'll have to see on how Jones will manage that. One driver take two? Oh, that's just my imagination. Off the pit road first is going to be another 32 on our chance. Got 
got the wave around to the 83 of Joe Burgie. Or Joe Burgie. Joe Burger. Booger. Burger. Burger. Burgie. Not how much they stop. 39 of Falkingham as well. You see him out in the racetrack, his whole uh, back end and front end is torn off of that machine. Currently 19th place, so one lap down, he's gonna hit pit road. Still a lot of racing to go. Might catch the lucky dog and put himself back on the lead lap. Burgie gonna elect to go on a pit road. Not a lot to talk about, but uh, by the looks of it, oh, yep, there goes Keaton Jones, pow, and Jones is going to call it a day. He says, F this, S, I'm out, and Jones, uh, who already has a 17X, is now on pit road. That is just unfortunate for Keaton Jones. You gotta feel it for the man, but unfortunately, when you hit the wall 500 times under caution, well, as expected to happen. Unfortunately for us, we do not have a driver to drag on a pit uh, into the box. Not into the box, but into the booth to interview uh, under caution, so. Race car aiming that outdated Mustang to hit pit road this time by the number 32 Hunter Johnson, number 30 of Dominic Howe, number two of Aaron Mulrooney will lead the field to the charge. Restart box green, green, green. We're up and away yet again as Dominic does not get a slot in line. Does have a run. That number two of Mulroney will have to see on how. Two right off the corner. Look at the 30 just pinching right to the corner panel of that number two of Mulroney. Side by side into turns three and four. Mulroney on the bottom side of the racetrack. And he made it sort of work, but. Now gonna shut the door on the front straightaway as they enter one. Everybody's now Loa Hankins is getting a taste of what it's like to hit the wall just a slight. Minor zero X's left and right, a couple of Nova, Nova racing machines. Actually Sylvia is not a Nova racing machine, it looked like it, but Austin Johnson, I know he's on Nova. He's running in top ten as of right now. He's floating around. As, a man, as I said, the man, the driver of the race, as of right now, Colton Salix, showing how it's done. He's back at P7, but that damage on that machine, I, I don't think it's going to be win worthy. But unless a, rate, uh, a late race caution comes out, 
We'll have to see on how it'll go for that 020. Meanwhile, fifth place is under fire. Actually, fourth place as Webster attempted the slider on the 92. And that allowed the double zero sail it to sail it to the inside. And slide job. Crossover to the bottom. Oh, he tried, man. I, I tell you what. Oh, contact as that's Kendrick who's trying to split the middle. Oh my goodness, man. Salik is putting up one hell of a fight. Got a lick of the outside wall. Going to lose a bit of momentum to the 45 of Webster. Hook it right behind the blocking being pulled. Jake Silvio shutting the door on Austin Johnson as the other one. Johnson might get a bit much of it. Oh, he hits the wall into one. Slide job on Bonser. We'll see if Bonser gonna pull low. It looks like no, now he does. Into the corner. Now he's gonna try his own lick at a slide job. Clear, clear, clear! No! That was as close of a slide job you could get. And he just about hit the brakes off of exit. And guess who's taking advantage of it? Kiloa Hankins in the 72. He's going to whip through the field. And now he logs himself into 10th place. But it looks a bit it's going to ninth. Kiloa to ninth. Haven't talked about these two cats. Lots of battling going through the racetrack. It's just hard to keep up on how this is all playing out. Well, you see right here, Aaron Mulrooney, Dominic Howe. Well, they're flaunting their bunker. Honking through. Oh, around goes Kendrick. Yellow flag is out. Does not hit the inside wall, but definitely had some contact made as they worked themselves right off the two. We'll have to see on what happened. I don't know who it was. It might have been Salik. Right across the corner, and it looks like, oh. Wow, didn't even hit the wall. He just drove into the door, the 65. No comment to say about that. Just comes down and slaps Kendrick. Around that 65 went. Have some damage on that machine, definitely. Don't know if uh, Silk did get loose, but it will be a. Uh, I don't know if he's getting a one-lap penalty or what, but he is on pit road. Hit pit road early, and he'll be trapped one down. So meanwhile, in and out, and by the looks of it, Webster gonna elect with two tires. Wow! Oh, other drivers electing with two tires as well. Jake Sylvia looks like the Webster machines in Miller Motorsports electing with two tires. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Looks like Salik uh, just parked it, and unfortunately his date is done for. That sucks for him. Oh, 
to see him out on the racetrack because that was the dude <laughs> that I wanted to win. Unfortunately, uh, Salik's going to DNF this race. Darn. Well, Salik, I see you on the race. Uh, I see you on chat. Hope to see you some next uh, some next I Star races, man. It's fun to see you. Work yourself around this uh, this oval. Webster, electing two tires. Don't know what's much of it. I mean, I guess these cars run tight. It's the B car. It runs tight everywhere. Jake Sylvia, teammate. Well, it, affiliate from Miller Motorsports. I don't think two tires are going to hold up. It's going to kill them both unless they get a quick caution so not as quick a caution as in like a, a restart wreck but a quick of a caution for everybody to hit pit road so i'd say a solid seven laps of green flag racing but we'll have to see on how the 45 cody webster will hold the charge with that number 32 of hunter jansen dominic howie and aaron bull rune so many proximity machines it, it hurts my eyes all right just about have uh, about 70, 17 cars left on the lead lap Falkenham catching up to the back half of the field obviously his car is all beaten and battered his day is already down in shambles. But here we go, get set up ourselves for this green flag. And green, green, green. Green, green, green. Sylvia didn't get a great restart. And the 32 of Hunter Johnson belongs to the second place. He wants to look low. Webster is pinching him. As he worked right off of turn one and two. Hunter, four tires is the call. No surprise there. Obviously, this late, uh, this this early to take two is going to cost Webster and Sylvia. But look at that, the number 30, Dominic Howe wants to make a make some noise as a look at three wide around the 30. Hunter got Hunter has some clean air now. Dominic to the low side, clips the apron, is going to wash up the racetrack and. Webster has the run on the outside as well as Sylvia. And this teammate of Mulrooney is not going to cut him some slack. And they go side by side in the three. Oh man, I cannot believe the 30 just slot himself in line, but nice move to keeping right against the safer barrier to slot right behind the two of Mulrooney. Look right behind, right behind looks like uh, William Schmidt, Kiloa Hankins, who's not even appearing on the racetrack. Oh, there he is. He's leaving a trail of smoke right behind, but William Schmidt fending off the 05 of Andrew Ramos as well. Oh my goodness, look at the blocking right behind. I think that's Cole Woody way up the racetrack. As they go three wide into one and two. Kendrick gonna sail it down low. Artist to keep it up right against that safer barrier. There's still three wide. Kendrick gonna back out of it finally. He's stuck side by side. Looks like it's with Connor Brandon. Who suddenly fell off. Slide job right off a of four. Focus in on this third place battle. Two tires is currently holding off four tires. 
Jake Sylvia taking two right sides. Bull Rooney, obviously four uh, four tires on that machine. I'm surprised how much two tires is, held, uh, is holding off. It might be the the call if we come down to a late race restart. We'll have to see uh, on how. Go. Here we go. Fight for fourth and third. Heads into three and four. Mulrooney gonna sail it to the low side. Not clear. Boy, he did. If that was some kind of attempt at a slide job, that was a really poor attempt. Now he's in the hands of that number 30 of Dominic Howe. It's right up against that safety barrier, just about scraping it off a slide jump. No, he put he put his own teammate in the wall. Oh my goodness, Mulroney put the 30 into the wall, and Kiloa Hankins gonna dive to the bottom of the racetrack to take that position. Oh my goodness, teammates making contact two weeks in a row. We've seen that happen, not just with proximity, but with other teams. It's Trexco and as well as Nova. Hit the bronze series at Iowa, but oh my goodness. Oh, got one car tagged the wall right off of two. Looks like Ramos is not going to make a move on that machine. It's just about pushing him into three. Slide job. 81. He holds the brakes. We're jamming up. Oh my goodness. Bonser just smashed the brakes. And my goodness. <laughs> I think that's William Schmidt. He's gonna get killed via position wise, and he drops all the way to 15. Three wide. Cole Woody nearly got into the back side of that number 81. Whoa! Kendrick, I thought he turned. Uh, with number three to Woody, right up to against the safety barrier. But I guess not. Calling it close. Oh. William's struggling with his race car, but that car looks as clean as a Darlington car. So some close racing going on. Oh! I think one driver just got turned. Yep, there he run goes that 65 of Kendrick. Gonna save it. Looks like Woody was also involved in that as well. Kendrick still sideways as I have a horrible voice crack. We're gonna see a replay of what happened there as now the field's uh, spread out because of that. And oh, it's like a bit, a little bit of mis miscommunication between, looks like Woody was thinking 65 would be all the way to the apron, but Kendrick uh, decided not to, and Woody unfortunately, uh, unfortunately doored that number three. I mean, doored the 65 of Kendrick. And Woody does disconnect from the session. Woody saying he parked it on chat. What are you gonna call it a day? Now since this, uh, well actually I was about to say this. Oh my goodness, look at right behind, near contact by the looks of his Glenn Bundren and William Schmidt going right at it. But in front of this, in front of those two people, look at that. We got a pack of five. Three proximity cars in this mix as Connor pulls a slide job on his teammate. That's his owner. Oh my goodness, Bonser with a slide job on two cars, right up off the two. I'm expecting a bit of contact as they work right off. As my dog is annoying me right now, I need to toss him up on the bed before anything else happens. Come on, scoot. There you go. All right, now I'm back. Oh, contact, and I expected it. Hard in the wall goes the 81. Oh my goodness. 
and that's the second separate incident no way that's the second separate incident involving the whole proximity team looks like oh well I wouldn't even blame that on anybody it looks like it could be a racing incident Look, Bergy just whip it up on the high side trying to avoid everybody, but we'll take a look at it again. Heater comes right in front of the 30. It looks like the 30 Adonic got tight. Slapped the outside wall. Uh, Ramos was there. Looks like Bonser was trying to split the middle. There was also contact before uh between the 81 and the 05 before, after the 30 hit the wall, or I mean before the 30 hit the wall. Watch this maneuver by the number 83 of Joe Burgi sees a spinning 81 right up against the outside wall, finds a hole and whips himself on the high side. That machine is unscathed. Looks like to be just a bad racing incident, unfortunately, and that gives a bit of breathing room. Well, I mean, that gives Webster and Sylvia some good old space because they took two tires last pit stop, and it worked out for them. They took track position rather than tires, and here they are. They're running top five, and now they could just elect on four, and they might be fast from this point forward as uh, Falkingham is just going to drive on through. By well, the looks of it, probably missed his pit stall. As we work right off of pit road, yo! Don't even know who came out first. I think it would be the number 32 of Hunter Johnson. By the looks of it, it will be. That was close. Electing to stay out. Very curious on the top of the box of why the 39 of Falkiam elected to stay out. That machine is obviously destroyed. I mean, it, it looks destroyed. I honestly don't know if that's as bad as damage as I thought. Uh, the splitter is alright. I mean, the whole rear end is junk. Scroll through the field fairly quickly. Um, Falkingham, Hunter, Webster, Mulrooney, Johnson, Sylvia, Brannon, Kiloa Hankins, Heater, Bundren, Joe Burgi. What are you doing, Scooter? Search my bed. Joe Burgi, excuse me, Ryan Kendrick. William Schmidt, Andrew Ramos, Daniel Falkingham. So Falkingham does elect to go back onto pit road by the looks of it. Uh, Bonser is dead on pit road, unfortunately. So in total, we have 15 cars out on the racetrack. So uh, Falkingham does elect to come on in. How 
many to go do we have? 25 laps to go. The fuel window was looking every 30 to 45, so... If we do get a green-white checkered, or two... Uh... It will... That fuel window will be a concern, but as of right now, everybody topped it off, I'm expecting it. And they all slapped on four. Pace car slides itself on the pit road, green, green, green! Green, green, green! And a great restart by that number 32 of Johnson to pull away by multiple car lengths over that second place car, Webster, who's not been nailing down restarts. He's ahead in the one. Oh my goodness, might have been a bit of contact as they ended one. That's Mulrooney. I think door the 45 up the rail. Oh, we got a wreck in the background. Yellow flag is out. Oh, that puts ourselves to, I think, a single file restart. That does. So, a weird restart wreck. Puts us down to. Puts us back in the caution. Oh no, Dominic just straight lost it right off of two. Hit the apron and grabbed that number 31. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's having a nice run. I didn't expect that apron to be that sensitive. You'll see him hit the apron there and, uh, yeah, just couldn't catch the car and into the outside wall, that number 30 went. Another Prox car involved in some kind of shenanigan. Right there, flips the apron. No, right here, he flips the apron. Tries to save it, but looks like he's running a faster gearbox on that machine. And it snapped right. And his day went from junk to even more junk. If Daniel ran into him, uh, <laughs> I would have laughed. So we're under caution again. Chat, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a question. Put your picks down on chat. Uh, type in your number of who you think is gonna win here for tonight. So we're gonna come to the 20 to go. I'm gonna probably tally up everybody's prediction. See who's right, who's wrong. My prediction is on that number 32 of Hunter Johnson who's led the most laps here tonight. Has led more than halfway, so definitely has the most laps secure. But can he finish off the job? Probably will. Because he's been the only person to really pull away from the rest of the field. And this is his best track. Got a lot. Austin Johnson. Austin just voted for himself. Twenty-four. Got a lot of votes on Austin Johnson. Surprised. There he is. Gonna go and head uh, and take a deep review. On that machine. Johnson uh, started 18th, now in third. Off of that restart, uh, looks like he found himself around the 45. He's gonna be on the low side for the restart. So if he does get a good jump on the other Johnson, he could gun down to the low side and take it into one. But we'll have to see on how that will turn out, because... Hunter, I don't think, has been communicating with anybody. Otherwise, uh, I mean, besides his teammate. 
on restart, so. We'll have to see. But before we continue on with statistics and stuff like that, we'll dive in. Well, there's more statistics right here. This is point standings as of right now. This was point standings right after the third race, which took place at, uh, give me a moment, Richmond. And Johnson picked it over the 39, Falkingham. So, Hunter, even though he has two wins on his resume, he will uh, have to get in some kind of 10 points to get into web Oh, shoot, we are single file, so that, that just ruins it for Austin Johnson to make something happen. So it, now, now since the top two are proximity, I think Hunter might have, if this thing goes green all the way, he might have it in the bag, but we'll have to see as we slide ourselves for this green flag, green, green, green. green flag, green flag. Whoa, the number 116 and Jake Sylvia throwing the block on Connor as they head into one. Three wide as, oh my goodness, near contact as the under one. Sylvia throwing some major, major blocks. Looking like a firewall protecting out uh, computers from viruses. I don't even know. I'm trying to make comparisons. But uh, Sylvia, really, really aggressive. But Connor has had enough of it. He goes on the low side. Sylvia's going to pinch. See enough though. Oh, Connor got a bit sideways off the three wide as Heater makes himself to the low side. Oh, well, looks like he backed out of it. And slots right in behind. I think it was 72. Kaloa Hankins. He was over right against the wall. And all up front. Two proximity gals are pulling up and away. And my goodness, that racing mid pack is scaring me. I'm afraid we're going to have another caution here in just moments. Oh, the 65 gets into the wall. We got to have a bit of contact as Schmidt gets in the mix of it. He gets sort of sandwiched. Right up off the corner, and the 30 of Dominic Howe going to peek to the low side. Glenn Bundren gets shoved right next to the safer barrier. Slide job on the front stretch, sort of, as they enter one. Racing for last place. And even though this is the tail end of the field, still worth a lot of points. 28 points on the line for this race, and you're sitting 14th. You have to race for every position. Field is now single file. It's Falkingham uh, out of the picture, unfortunately. I hate to say it. Now the field has calmed itself down. Just about single file, roaming the high side. But once those tires start wearing down, you're gonna you're gonna see some differences with speed as Kiloa is showing his Hawaiian internet. See it on the no, Club West Racing. Club West Racing, whatever that is. I guess they don't have a Club Boy. I'm surprised. They displayed clubs under the number. You see, uh, zoomed in on Jake Sylvia. New England. Webster, New York. Austin Johnson, California. Spots and side by side action. Oh, into the wall goes a 79. William Schmidt just zooming through the middle. The number 30, Adama Cow, wants to make himself room. Look at the run the 79 has off of turn number four. Will they make contact as Dominic trying to clear up off these cars? But I don't know if Dominic is down power because unexpected to power off a of four. Well, it looks like it's not Schmidt to the high side. Oh, they made contact. Oh, my goodness. These people are trying to kill each other. Schmidt to the low side. It was the only kind of side-by-side -side action we have on track. But Dominic. Oh, my goodness. Schmidt pulls the block on Ramos. As they enter one, Ramos just sailed Schmidt into one. Might have, 
Pushed him into one. A bit harder than he wants to do. Yo! What in the world? We're racing for last place. My goodness. These drivers have no chill. Ramos must be mad at Schmidt. Let's go through the field and again. Uh, see if there's any side by side. But it looks like we're not. So yeah, the only battle on the racetrack is these two cats right here. 2011 Talladega. William Schmidt, Andrew Ramos, just having fun at each other. 13th place. Mr. Schmidt to the low. Oh, Burgie's off at the no! Oh, jeez, don't run Burgie up on the racetrack. And Burgie is gonna slot himself back as look up front. Oh, near contact as Ramos finally finds himself around. The number 79 of William Schmidt. We're gonna see what happened to Joe Burgie. As by the looks of it, uh oh, might have found the outside wall in turn number three and four. And right there, into the outside wall, slides it, luckily does not spin the car out. Keeps the car under control and whips it, or just about drifts it through the grass. Still trying to find grip on the car, flies it through the apron. Does not spin the car out, but he falls to 14th place, unfortunately. Eight laps to go. We're getting a bit racy here. It's Kiloa Hankins and number 11, Eric Keeter. Gonna go right at it. Ever since Kiloa got his new T150, he used to run on the T80. No force feedback on that machine. Ever since he got a feel of that car. Oh boy, he's been flying. Consistent top 10s as Heater slides all right off the corner. They're going to make contact. Oh no! Kiloa into the grass. Uh, right as I was com uh, complimenting him on his strong run here tonight. Kiloa, a victim of circumstances. He is definitely going to be pissed at that number 11. There's no doubt about it. My goodness. You can't blame Peter for what he pulled because it's a single groove racetrack right against that safety curve. The only way to pass is, well, the bottom. And unfortunately, that only option was a slide job. He tried to make it as clean as possible, but obviously it came out really dirty. Kiloa Hankins has now uh, a dent of Eric Peter in front of his machine. Strong top 10 run. But as we come down to the, uh, the final stint of this one, everybody just about single file. We're going to focus in on the leader, Hunter Johnson. He started in fourth place. In his standards, that'd be a poor qualifying effort if he doesn't get pulled. But luckily for him found himself in position up front he works around the racetrack as I think Austin Johnson tagged the outside wall no, never mind of that but Johnson most dominant car of the day will lead the, uh, will lead the field to these final five laps unless there is a caution as my goodness number 92 Connor Brandon his credit card swiping the safer barrier those transactions are being paid in X's. But luckily we don't run an incident limit anymore. Thank you, Brian Miller, for being an admin. Right off. Two laps of racing left. Now you have to cross your fingers and hopefully they don't wreck. By the looks of it, everybody's clean unless somebody self-spins in. 
we will reach the white flag and that number 32 of Hunter Johnson has led 81 laps going to lead his 82nd as he crossed the wire this time by as he works himself right up against the safer barrier in turn three and four white flag for Hunter Johnson one more lap to go here at Kansas the ice car Peter Gunning graphic design series as they work in the turns number one and two The battle for second, not going to matter, as Mulroney is going to outrun Webster. And at number two, working right off a of turn, number four, checkered flag, three wins and four starts. Harder Johnson, your winner here tonight. Oh, and they wreck across the wire. <laughs> Looks like that's Ryan Kendrick. Oh my goodness, Ramos just proven the safer barrier doesn't mean crap to him as Giloa Hankins runs into him as well. Oh my goodness. Yeah, classic, amazing. Thank you. My man, what a win by Hunter Johnson. Three wins in the season for that number 32. Picked it up at Auto Club. This actually, this is three wins in a row for that number 32 of Hunter Johnson. My goodness, he has been on a hot streak, and he's gonna burn it down here tonight. Congratulations, to that 32. Yes, man, just about a fourth of the race under caution. Sorry, bit of excitement there by me, but we'd love to see him. A lot of green flag racing in the NASCAR after these past couple of weeks. A good green stint is something to cherish off of. But Hunter Johnson will be your winner here for tonight. Congratulations to him. We're going to slide ourselves to the side and interview the top, uh, top three here for tonight. Hunter Johnson, Aaron Mulroney Jr., Cody Webster. We'll be right back right after this. And uh, before I go, uh, we'll go ahead and pull up full results in front of your screen. Hunter Johnson, Aaron Mulrooney Jr., Cody Webster, Austin Johnson, Jake Silva, Jake Sylvia, Connor Brandon outside the top five, Ryan Kendrick, Eric Keeter, Kiloa Hankins, Glenn Bundren. And now 10th, Dominic Howe, Andrew Ramos, Joe Burgi, William Schmidt, Daniel Falkingham, Chase Bonser, Cole Woody, Colton Salick, Keaton Jones, Garrett Hess, Blaze McKinney, Dylan Alt, Garrett Pig, Braxton DeWeese. Liam Sheen, Dane Cruz, Gabe Allen, and Mark Brannigan, who did not start the race. Again, as I said, congratulations on that number 32 of Hunter Johnson. We'll be right back right after this. Kansas 150 going to run out post-race here in just a slight.
If you're not just joining us here for tonight, we just rounded out the Kansas 150 for the Iscar Peter Graphic, uh, Peter Graphic Kenny series designs. Yeah, <laughs> Iscar Peter Kenny <laughs> Graphic Design Series. Want to thank him for sponsoring these se uh, these season. Go ahead and check him out on Instagram right after the race, but I mean right after interviews. But we'll go ahead and slide our top three into the booth. That number 32 of Hunter Johnson. Oh well. Session ended and into the booth goes that number 32 of Hunter Johnson. Hunter, man, congratulations. You, man, you dominated, dominated tonight, man. How was the car out there? Uh, it felt pretty good in the beginning. I, I didn't really get qualifying down right, but uh, as the race went on, I quickly got uh, the hang of it. Um, I think, you know, it, it got pretty tight. I, I didn't think I was as good as on the short run as I was on the longer run. Uh, but then that, at some point we had a, uh, green flag run where Cody had stayed out on two tires and he was actually hanging with me. So I didn't know how that was going to play out if he could stay up there. But, uh, I guess, I guess he ended up a little bit further back, but even still I was watching my relative and he wasn't, he was gaining on me. Uh, so that, that was kind of, uh, making me wonder whether I should, adjust my line or not but i decided like it wasn't really he was gaining maybe a tenth or two on me in a span of 20 laps so i just decided it wasn't worth it um but uh yeah the car the car felt really good we didn't get any damage tonight so uh we every every single run i could expect the same uh th expect the same for the car handling so uh it was just all around uh pretty good yeah, 10 four man a great finish to round yourself out three wins in the row in the ice car peter Gunny graphic design series a lot of momentum being taken off uh taken off of those last couple of races and put into here and you showed why you're a contender here tonight not only that your proximity team as a whole you qualified a, a lot of proximity cars qualified within those first three rows and uh having those teammates in there probably uh was a bit of reassurance for you right yeah, it seems like every time we can uh, qualify up front, we stay up front, and then that in turn leads to us being able to work together on the restarts. And uh, like I said about Cody, he was he was up there, but every time we timed a restart, he wouldn't be able to uh, get. It. We'd all get in line before he could. He'd either get shuffled up to the outside, or the guy on the outside would get a better jump than he would. Because uh, we're just we're we're really coordinated uh, at this point. We have uh, everything that we work on on restarts down pat so uh it's just uh it's just repetition at this point and i think that uh proximity has just been like the best at that and this entire this entire uh series but also this entire league and i think that's just such a uh huge uh asset to have all right and you put it up to the test and you proved why proximity is looking to be number one here in ice garden congratulations on your third win of the season any sponsor you want to thank you for tonight yeah, I got to thank Proximity Racing, everybody, uh, all the drivers and everybody that uh, all of our resources over there. It's a really great organization to be a part of. All right, man, 10 for Hunter Johnson. His third win of the season comes here at Kansas. Can't wait to talk to you coming next week, man. All right, thank you. We'll slide ourselves back for one position to a teammate of his, and that would be the number two of Aaron Mulroney Jr. And Mulroney, you won the Bristol race, and you come home here second. Congratulations on your second place finish. Uh, how was the car out there tonight? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I definitely just want to congratulate Hunter on the win there. You know, we were having a pretty good race. It was uh, me, him, and Webster, and Dominic Howe throughout the night. And, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, I would say the car tonight was interesting. Uh, I was basically kind of running the high line throughout the entire uh, night because, frankly, that's how Kansas is. At the beginning of the run or the restarts, you can run that low line for about one lap, and then it's immediately up to the high line. I was uh, just basically trying to find grip and seeing if I could gain any time on Hunter. And I was able to just kind of stay even with him and drive it home to a second place finish. Right, I was going to talk about the groove here tonight. As you said, you could run the bottom just for about like one lap or so. And after that, you have to move all the way against the safer barrier to find some grip around there. Uh, this track being progressively banked and just about a one groove racetrack. Uh, How did you find yourself in second place there at the end? Uh, I was basically, we were, I had some poor pit stops tonight, I was kind of misjudging them, so I kind of worked through my field, you know, probably like up from, probably 5th or 6th and 7th maybe, and it was basically kind of just trying to get as many spots as possible on those restarts, and then kind of just slowly progressing 
through the field, you know, kind of maybe maybe having some slide jobs, but really it was all on the restarts, and that's what the that was the most vital part of the race tonight. Right, man, and you and your teammate timed it out well on those restarts, and you put yourself one and two all the way to the start finish. Uh, congratulations, man, on your second place finish. As I said, and just want to want to thank you for tonight. Yeah, I want to thank you for broadcasting, Zika. I always appreciate it. I definitely also want to thank Proximity Racing, Splash and Go Graphics, Trey Shellsworth Images, also Virage Doors, and Iris Singh for creating this service. All right, man. 10-4. Aaron Mulroney Jr. going to round himself out here in second. Congratulations, man. Uh, can't wait to talk to you coming next week. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. That was Aaron Mulroney Jr. And we're going to slide ourselves back to the lone one out of a Miller Moser Sports Machine. And that'd be the number 45 of Cody Webster, who started himself in 12th. How do you work yourself up into that third place, man, uh, from the... All the way to the finish. Uh, man, well, we, I only had a few left to practice. Christmas is around the corner, wrapping presents. So everybody was saying run the outside. So I figured that was the quickest way around. And that's why I qualified 12th. But I figured I had a good enough vehicle to get up to the front, make him move, even with a one leg groove, and keep my nose clean. Uh, brushed the wall a few times, nothing crazy. But, you know, it's all about waiting for people to make mistakes and just, you know, making passes when you can i made a few three wide passes on people that are trying to block each other ahead of me and was just able to just zoom right by them because they're you know they're slowing each other down but i was just able to keep it clean and uh tried a few things and some strategy it, it kind of worked out didn't just i didn't have enough time to really use my full strategy into play to try to beat hunter but uh all in all um came from 12th up to the, what third so Solid night for me. Right, man. You said you were tinkering around with strategy. You elected with two for one of those restarts. Uh, and how did that play out? How was the car out there on two tires? Uh, take, you know, this takeoff speed hunter was just so good. It was, I would, I would lose automatically a second. And with him starting behind me, he was just able to get to the bottom and drove right by me. But I was able to hang with him. It, everybody was like, oh, it's going to be looser. It was, the only time it was looser was like a little little more loose at three and four but it was manageable because we didn't have we had like five six laps uh on the tires so you know it was manageable but it wasn't terrible um it worked out i just needed you know i, I needed one of those runs to go all the way through to where we had a green flag pit stop and i just i was gonna flip the strategy on him and short pit and it was gonna work out of my advantage but never got to that point yeah, but you round yourself out here in third place here for tonight. Congratulations, Webster, on your third place finish. Any sponsor you want to thank here for tonight? Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, all those guys still working on the vehicle, still somehow keeping this car up front. And I might have lost the points lead tonight, but hey, if we're not in points lead, we're in second. But uh, Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, um, all the guys, Miller Motorsports, Webster Motorsports, so over in my league, Redline Racing, all the guys over there, they were great. Uh, stick behind me. And uh, trying to get better and better. Got to beat these proc guys. Now 10-4. A step closer to victory. Back in victory lane yet again for Cody Webster. He runs himself out in third. Uh, can't wait to talk to you coming next week, man. Sounds good. That was Cody Webster in the number 45. And that will be all here for tonight. The number 32 of Hunter Johnson will take it from start to finish. And he'll be your winner here for tonight. Until next time, my name is Ico Reyes. Uh, tune in to the next time slots for, obviously, the next race is Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Also, NFRL on Tuesday nights. Go ahead and tune us in on those days as well. Congratulations to the number 32 of Hunter Johnson. Until next time, my name is Ico Reyes. We're signing out for the 150, round number four for the Ice Car Peter Genny Craft Design Series. We'll see you soon.